inverse cosine function. Okay, so what about the cosine function? Can we find an inverse there? Well, once again, we know that the cosine function takes in angles and sends out ratios. I've got the graph over here, and of course it has the same problem. It fails the horizontal line test. So the regular cosine function doesn't have an inverse function. That means we'll have to consider the restricted cosine function. Well, can we just use the same restriction we did with sine? Can we just take the portion of the graph from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2? You can see that's not going to work. That section still fails the horizontal line test. We're going to have to take a different section. We want to take the largest section we can that still passes, and that section is the section from 0 down to pi. That green section of the cosine function is called the restricted cosine function. f of x equals cosine x, but only angles between 0 and pi. That function, the restricted cosine function, has an inverse function. We write f inverse x. Again, we have two ways to note it, cosine inverse x or arc cosine x. And what does this inverse function do? Well, it takes in ratios. Once again, highest ratio 1, lowest ratio negative 1. So only ratios that are between negative 1 and 1. And it sends out angles. But not any angle. The only angles that this function has ever heard of are angles between 0 and pi. Once again, this information is very important to learn and memorize in order to make sense of the inverse cosine function. Let's try some examples. Again, I want to do this by hand, if at all possible. We're giving our answers in radians. Inverse cosine of negative root 3 over 2. The negative root 3 over 2 is a ratio being put in the inverse cosine function. I'm looking for the angle that creates that ratio. Of course, I can't just find any angle I want because the inverse cosine function only knows about angles between 0 and pi. That means I will always be drawing inverse cosine pictures in the first or second quadrant. Well, I've got a negative ratio here, so I can't be in the first quadrant. I must be in the second quadrant. Cosine is negative there. I'll draw myself a little reference triangle picture. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And of course, I recognize this immediately. It is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Well, what angle do I give? I give an angle between 0 and pi that lands at that spot. Looks like I've got a second quadrant angle here. If this is 30, then what's left must be 150 degrees or in radians 5 pi over 6. Okay, how about inverse cosine of negative 1? Well, when I see 1's and zeros, negative 1's, I'm thinking that's going to be a unit circle picture. So I'll draw myself a unit circle. The cosine definition on the unit circle is the A coordinate. Now remember, the only portion of the unit circle that I can consider is this portion from 0 to pi. Is there a spot in that section that has an A coordinate of negative 1? And the answer is yes. It would be right here. Here's the point, negative 1, 0. That's the A coordinate that we were given. Well, all I have to do is write down the angle that lands at that spot, and of course, it's just 180 degrees, or in radians, pi. Lastly, how about arc cosine of 5? What happens if I stick 5 into the inverse cosine function? Well, hopefully you see right away, I can't do that. The highest ratio I can stick in is 1, and so this one would be undefined. Thanks for watching.